All right, this is just a quick little summary of time-dependent behavior of um, resistor inductor circuits and re resistor capacitor circuits. Um, so here is a circuit with a, a battery, a resistor, and, and a coil or an inductor. And we're going to say that at time t equals zero, you throw the switch uh, closed. Well, if you wait a really long time, after all, this thing is just a wire, um, eventually current's just going to kind of settle down. So it's going to build up to the value you would get from Ohm's law or like V over R. So eventually it's going to get up to this level, right? Now in the short term though, when you, when you first connect this, the um, inductor is going to act like a, like a break in the short term. It's really going to fight you back in the very short term um, because of the changing flux. And so the current is going to start really low and then build up to the current value that you would get from Ohm's law, um, uh, epsilon over R, right? If you go to get the voltage drop across the resistor, again, just using Ohm's law, that's just basically going to be I times R. Well, so really all you have to do is multiply this graph by R. And so this is just going to build up eventually to the battery voltage being across the, um, the resistor. Um, eventually you just have a steady current with really no, no voltage drop over this thing. It's just a wire. And so all the voltage drop will eventually be here. Um, so it's just going to build up like this, exponential approach. Now the deal here is that you know that the voltage drop across this thing plus the voltage drop across this thing has to add up to the battery voltage. So basically whatever this thing doesn't have, this thing's going to have to have. Um, and so what's going to happen then is, you know, for instance, in the early going, if there's no voltage dropping across the resistor, it must all be dropping across this thing. Um, and so the um, voltage drop across the um, the inductor is going to start high and then come down low like this. Um, so you can see it's really just doing whatever this thing um, isn't, right? So these are exponential approaches um, to values here, and then this is an exponential decay. Um, and finally, we can look at the rate of change of the current. Um, in the early going, the rate of change of the current is um, really big and positive, and then it, it's going to taper off to be where it, you know a steady current with a rate of change of zero. Um, so it's going to start off real high here, uh, and then taper down. Now you notice that it's tapering down much like this is, and that's because the voltage drop across an inductor um, that's going to be L di dt. Um, so that's why these graphs, that's why these graphs look similar, right? Um, final comment about these: um, this is an exponential approach, um, and so exponential approaches. Um, so for instance, if we do I of t. Exponential approaches look like this. It's you put the value that it approaches, and then it's basically one minus an exponential. One minus, and it's e to the minus um, r t over l. Right. Then um, so that's with a, a resistor inductor circuit. The big deal is to look at the short term. This thing acts like a break. That's why there's no current in the short term. In the long term, it acts like a wire. You have you know, maximum current. It's just going up to what you get from Ohm's law with a single resistor. Okay. Um, kind of the opposite behavior with a capacitor. When you first connect the thing, the, um, the charge from the battery, this excess positive here, excess negative here, it sees the empty plate. So it really wants to rush over there at the beginning. Um, so the current starts really high. Um, so in the short term, um, this guy acts like a wire. Right. So what's going to happen here is the current is going to start right away at the value that you'd expect from um, Ohm's law, basically V over R. Um, and then that's going to taper down as the plates start to fill. So as some charge starts to populate, that next bit of charge is going to be more reluctant to get over there. Um, so it's not really going to be as much of a rush and it's going to taper down like this. Um, and then like we saw before, the voltage drop across the resistor, well, that's just IR. So you can just multiply I times R. Well, this graph multiplied by R. 
So it's just going to build up to the battery voltage. Um, so this graph multiplied by R, or not build up, it's going to start at the battery voltage. It's going to taper down like this. Um, and then in this case, whatever voltage is not dropping across this must be dropping across that. Well, at the beginning, all of it is dropping on the resistor, so none of it must be dropping here on this thing. And then eventually this thing's going to fill up with charge, so you'll have you'll have full plates. You'll have positive charge on this side, negative charge on this side. So you're going to have a maximum voltage drop here once the current goes down to zero. When the current's at zero, no drop here, and all of it's going to be dropping there. Um, so this is going to build up like this. So the capacitor has whatever this thing doesn't, um, whatever the resistor doesn't. So these are exponential decays, that's an exponential approach. Um, likewise, the charge on the capacitor, um, well, that is, is just going to be, you can get from um, the definition of capacitance, which is C is Q over V. Well, V is going to be Q over C. Well, so really, this, this graph, the, the voltage uh, graph, is just this graph divided by a constant. So that means this is going to have the same shape. And you kind of knew that, that at the beginning there was no charge in the capacitor. It's going to fill rapidly at the beginning, but then kind of taper off as the charge gets more reluctant to get over to the um, capacitor. Um, so eventually the charge Q is going to build up to um, C times the voltage, or C times epsilon. So this is, a, um, this is an exponential approach. Um, and so that's going to look something like this. Q of T is, you just put the value that it approaches, um, C times epsilon, and then it's like 1 minus E to the minus T over RC. Right. Um, to get the current, you can take the, de the derivative, because current is uh, dQ dt. So current would be dq by dt. So if you take the uh, if you take the derivative of that with respect to t, first term will give you um, nothing because it's just a constant. Um, so you're really just taking the derivative of this guy. Um, and so what you're going to get is one over rc is going to come down. So you'll get you'll basically get minus one over rc actually um, times c epsilon and then times minus e to the minus t over rc. Uh, so if you simplify that a bit, you'll notice the, um, the C's there will cancel, and these negative signs will cancel. So you can see the current um, goes to epsilon over R, and then it has this exponential decay, e to the minus t over RC. All right, so that makes sense with what we got here. You start at epsilon over R, and then you taper down um, with this factor of e to the minus t over RC. Um, so I'll just write the function here. It's going to be epsilon over R, e to the minus t over RC. Right? So the, um, what you notice are what's called the time constant for both of these um, circuits. Um, in this case, you get this factor of e to the minus RT over L. Um, so what's called the time constant? e to the minus t over over tau, so this thing's called the time constant, and you can see in this case the time constant um, for the RL circuit um, is going to be what L over R, and you can see in this case since it's e to the minus t over tau that the time constant here is RC, so the time constant for an RC circuit um, is actually just RC.